Figma or Framer? How are they different and which is the right tool for you? Both are one of the best prototype design tool and they can both run on the browser. Figma is one of the most trending design tools today among UX UI. It offers a user-friendly interface but with rich configuration options. It's great for both beginners and technical users. Framer is also a prototype design tool but one that can use real code to create a customized component. While the coding tool may scare designers away, Framer perfectly functions and it works great as a standalone design tools even if you choose not to use coding at all. Figma and Framer are both growing their adoption rate rapidly in both freelancers and IT industries and most definitely will become the next standards. The question is Figma and Framer, which is the right tool for you and why? First, we'll compare the key features differences between the two. After that, I'll give you a ballpark of how to choose one over the other. Overall, Figma feels very task-oriented, smart and efficient with the way they lay out the designer interface. I feel like all the necessary actions and controls are always there when you need them, so it empowers you with agile and efficient tasking. Figma is very rich in quick action convenience. What I mean by this is that there is many convenience built in to make users' tasks easier and done speedy. I think this is one of the quality that makes Figma a very snappy design tool. Selection color. Figma lets you change color from a frame level. So if you select a frame with different color elements inside, in the right panel, you get a list of all the colors used in that frame. If I change the red swatch to a blue, then every red in that frame will update to blue. It's also a great reference to be able to quickly view the list of all the colors being used in that frame as the frame gets bigger and complex. It may help you identify duplicates of color with inconsistent hex. Another convenient quick feature I found was that you can hide layers in a component with a delete key. Generally, you can't delete an element from an instance because it's not the master, but a clone. So hiding is the only option. But our natural instinct as a user is to hit the delete key because we're used to it that way. Figma is smart enough to know this and interprets delete of an instance layer as hide. It's a small thing, but these nice conveniences are blended in very intuitively that you almost don't notice these subtle considerations, but it helps you as a whole with your work speed incredibly. Meanwhile, Framer only offers hide action from the right-click menu. Text configuration is easy. Figma's got some real in-depth text configuration feature exposed to the interface. Auto width, auto height, paragraph, graph spacing. In addition to that, we have another whole advanced configuration panel for text. While this may feel excessive, it actually makes sense for designers to be clearly presented with the options and limits. Because when designing UI, text is very much part of the visual communication tools that speak hierarchy, contrast, and also require accessibility considerations. Let's talk about Framer now. Enabled by the power of codes, Framer lets you easily create real UI and interactions with out-of-the-box tools. Of course, once you open a door into the code features, we all know that what sets the limit is not the application, but our skills and knowledge. Convenient native tools. Framer natively supports several tools that help you prototype behaviors quicker that Figma doesn't offer. Scroll lets you set a fixed frame and the user can scroll through long contents inside the frame. Page lets you easily create a carousel by linking multiple contents. Then there's also tabs that auto creates tabs as you link content. Override. Override is probably one of the things Framer is reputable for. There's two aspects to this sauce. First, in the designer page, any properties of a component instance can be overridden. Yes, any properties of a component instance can be overridden. In Figma, a component instance can't be modified much other than the overall size, color, text, and you can't selectively move or resize the inner elements unless you detach from the master. In Framer, however, you can literally take an instance and tear it apart and still maintain the relationship with the master. This is a great way for designers to iterate on a component and still maintain all dependencies.
dependencies to the master. The second is the actual override feature. Framer lets you override any elements with a custom code. In other words, it's almost letting you create a custom plugin on the spot to install to the canvas elements. This indeed uses few lines of codes, but you can literally only learn how to add few lines here. And even with just that, will open you up to a whole bright new world of capabilities like adding interactions, animations, or communicating with other elements to padding input. Framer allows you to set paddings in the properties panel. This adds extra accuracy over using arrow key to shift positions. Prototype viewer. They both have a pretty identical prototype viewer. However, Framer has a couple of extra features. First, apart from the browser page preview, Framer also has a preview panel you can open in the designer. This allows you to validate your design development real time as you update them. And secondly, Framer can generate a quick QR code for you to share your prototype with stakeholders and testers. Figma, on the other hand, currently relies on a mobile app, which you'll have to download and sign in as yourself in order to preview version controls. Figma comes with a version history control, even with the free plan, and you get up to 30 days. This is great because all your project files are on the cloud in Figma. Framer does not have its own version control yet, but they did say they are working on one. Instead, Framer currently offers a solution to bridge with GitHub using command line interface. While GitHub is no doubt a better version control for Teamworks, the Framer integration feels quite technical with a steep learning curve. A third party extension. Figma has a product integrated plugin store that lets you quickly browse, install, and access plugin features right away. The plugin literally takes zero seconds to install and it's super snappy. While Framer's package store is also integrated into the product, they are technically packages and not plugins. So installing them simply provides you with a set of pre-built components that help you build stuff easier. Meanwhile, Figma supports actual plugins, so you can install features to quickly insert like stock images, placeholder text, or you can add the ability to test color contrast for accessibility tests, and so on. As it, Framer comes with many basic components out of the box, and they are also coded and interactive. This is great because it allows you to wire a decent fidelity mockup very quickly. Figma has many public and paid assets available for you to use online. Also, you can easily find many works showcased by other people. Now let's talk about who is Figma for? Who is Framer for? Figma. If you care for speed and ease of use, Figma is the way to go. Once you get used to Figma's convenience, it's hard not to come back to it. If you're not into coding at all, then Figma is most definitely your choice as well. While Framer isn't a bad choice still, many capabilities still depend on coding and not everything you expect may be available as a graphic user interface. If better than Envision is good enough for you as a prototype, then Figma is also your choice. Considering most tech companies rely on Envision for prototyping, Figma's prototype fidelity might just be good enough for what's demanded today. Framer, if you wish to have full control over your UI and add configurations like max width, minimum width, breakpoints, logics, states, then Framer will be your choice. Even without coding knowledge, you'll still get a lot of benefit by utilizing the package store. If you're in the user research or testing and you want a quality product validation, then Framer is gonna be your choice as well. This is because the closer your prototype is to the real life product, the better test results and validation accuracy you are going to get. If the production code is the absolute source of truth in your organization, then Framer will be your choice too. Framer can import production codes into a component on the canvas to design with. This helps both design and engineers to reference the same source of truth or the same exact UI. Conclusion. So Figma and Framer both have their strengths and ultimately, you will have to decide based on your priority. Figma overall has a more intuitive user interface and more controls and options available right where you need them. I see it as an all-rounder design tool that does a pretty decent job at 70 to 80% of the general needs. If you don't or don't plan to use coding, then probably I'd confidently choose Figma. Even if you haven't given up on coding, you could still start with Figma since it's free and the friendly UI will help you get used to using frames 
and understand the workflow of managing design patterns. Then one day if you choose to move to Framer, it'd probably be a smoother transition. Framer isn't as loaded as Figma with controls, but in terms of component configurations, there isn't much you can't do with Framer that Figma can. Because Framer supports code, if you know basic JavaScript or HTML, CSS, then there's no way you shouldn't take advantage of Framer because you already got the path to building overrides and code components and take full advantage. All right, that's enough for today. Hopefully that was something for you guys. Good luck and stay safe.